this city, which could be any city, on this morning, which could be any morning, somebody's about ready to get going. Could be me, could be you. There are a lot of us. But let's take a name. This one, Adam Hathaway. And this address. And let's take this house. One look and you can see what it is. You can see what it isn't, too. It isn't in very good shape for one thing. Needs paint and fixing up. Take a look at Adam's car. You can see what it is and what it isn't. It certainly isn't like this, is it? Do you think Adam sees it like this or like this? Or does he think about it at all? Things can look different to different people, you know. Oh, by the way, there's Adam. You can see what he looks like, but you can't see what he looks like to himself. And a lot of what makes up a person, how he sees himself, what he wants, his needs, desires, and such things, are way down deep inside. They must be intuitively rather than physically sensed, and even then by only Adam himself. By golly, it can seem pretty lonely sometimes being somebody. Oh, you may be wondering why you of all people are being subjected to a consideration of what Adam Hathaway wants, especially since so many of those things are discernible to only Adam himself. Well, if you're going to take such an uncharitable view of the situation, I suggest you put yourself in Adam's place and then see how you feel. Oh, it may have occurred to you that Adam and I look pretty much alike. Well, I'd call that an understatement. I'd say we look exactly alike, and for a very definite reason. All right, let's get going. Adam? Yeah? Okay, boy, get about it. Get about what? Hey, what's going on? Why ask me? It's right there in front of you, the whole situation. Political, financial, standing at the clubs, the price of potatoes, everything that's happening all over everywhere. Say, I don't get this. What do you want? More important, what do you want? Who said I wanted anything? Are you completely satisfied with life in general? That's my business. Ah, that's just the point. There isn't any point. You come busting in here and start telling me that Oh, you've got me all mixed up. Well, do something about it. Look, let's be reasonable. Sure, I want a lot of things, but... Well, get going. What you're saying isn't making any sense. It makes perfect sense. You're on your own. Get going. Look, I don't like to feel like I'm being pushed around. Who does? You'll notice that about Adam. Sometimes he doesn't seem to know his own mind. I tell him he's on his own, and he tells me to quit pushing him around because he wants to be on his own. Oh, well, let's see what happens. Uh, uh, wait, you forgot again. Get back there and drink your orange juice. Are we can't, we're late on the... Yeah, we gotta hurry. Wait, we're coming. They're always late. Can't you control them any better than that? Oh, they're just like all children. Here, you drink the orange juice. It's good for you. You gotta start controlling them sometime. I can't do everything around here. It's bad enough being pushed around at the plant. Something wrong at work? Oh, it's nothing new, really. Just some more of that get on the ball. Gotta cut costs and turn out more. You know that old bromide about producing more goods for more people and boosting civilization? You heard that gag before. Oh, I certainly have until I'm sick and tired of it. They're always putting the pressure on you to, to squeeze a little more out of you. They work you too hard. Now, don't get excited. I get paid for what I do. It's just that I'm tired all the time. Hey! Huh. I'd like to know what happens to it. Do you know how long it's been since I've had a new winter coat? Uh, what about the fun we started for the children's college education? And, and uh, how old is our car? I get it. So you're sorry you didn't marry a millionaire. Look, I'm doing the best I can. I didn't say you weren't. It's just that they don't pay you enough. Why don't you go to them and, and tell them, huh? Tell them what? Look, honey, I'm trapped. Let's face it. Oh, that's just the trouble. You don't fight for what's coming to you. I'm tired. Maybe I have been working too hard. They don't appreciate you. Believe me, I could tell them a thing. You know, Butch Maloney told me the trout were biting last weekend. Maybe it would be a good chance for me to go up there next Saturday morning and... Fishing? Look, 
For six months, you've been promising me that you'd paint this kitchen. Ah, so I've been working too hard, huh? So I spent a weekend painting the kitchen. Oh, weekend? Well, you could do it in a couple of hours. You'll make it sound so easy. What? Oh, what's so hard about it? You just get one of those rollers and... Before I even start painting, I gotta take all the stuff out of the cupboards. I gotta disconnect the stove and heist that away from the wall. I gotta move the refrigerator and the cabinets and scrape up all the woodwork. Oh, stop feeling so sorry for yourself. Well, you say I'm working too hard? You're working too hard. You should follow me around for a day. That broken down washing machine and that, that old fashioned vacuum cleaner and, and, and no dishwasher and, and picking up after you and the children and, and cooking and cleaning and painting. <laughs> Maybe it occurs to you that if Adam had a bigger job and more money, he could buy that new coat for his wife and hire somebody to paint the kitchen. Well, nobody would argue with that, and Adam could go fishing. But if that's what you think, I think you're absolutely right. Under different circumstances, the circumstances would be different. Oh, Adam. Did you see what happened? I sure did. Just discussing that. Anything wrong? Anything wrong? We both saw red. Yes, I know. What produced a situation like that? Well, you heard what she said. I sure did. Then what happened? She got exactly what she had coming. Well, then everything turned out all right, didn't it? Wait a minute, I didn't say that. I know. I said that. Say, I think you're nuts. What's going on around here, anyway? Well, I guess we better clear that up. Now, you like to fish. Sure I do. You know that. And you expect to catch your own fish? Of course. Who do you think's gonna catch him for me? All right. When you get a good string, is it just a matter of luck? Oh, no. Gotta have the right tackle and the right lures and know how to handle your gear. Of course, you gotta be willing to work at it and maybe get wet once in a while. But mostly it's up here. You gotta use your head. But you say when the chips are down, you still have to catch your own fish. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, I have a theory about that. What? That I have to catch my own fish? Catch, or make, or produce? Let's use the word produce. To have more of what you want, you must first produce more. And whatever your circumstances, they're yours. And you alone can make them produce what you want. Without any help at all, or hindrance either, all by yourself. You mean... And in a given situation, I and I alone can make it come out right by doing the right things? Is that it? Right. Then I'll have to have a free hand. Don't you give me situations and tell me to make them come out right. You keep out of this. I'll pick my own situations. Did you hear what I heard? As nearly as I can make out what Adam just said to me was, I don't understand what you're saying. Let me tell you what you mean. Uh-oh. Here comes another situation. Butch, why, you old son of a gun? I didn't know that was you. <laughs> What's new? I got a new wagon. How you like it? Fine, that's great, but uh, how come a station wagon? Oh, get hip, boy. Look at all the room back there. Throw in a full camping outfit, fishing gear, no strain. Yeah, you're good at that. Yes, sir, you're not going to find me hanging around weekends. And come next vacation time, I'm taking the little woman and the kids on a trip they'll remember the rest of their lives. Yeah, that's swell. And boy, this is really a little dreamboat. All the accessories they make. I really shot the works this time. Uh-huh. Uh, when are you gonna get rid of this old heap of yours? Oh, I don't know. For me, an automobile is just something to get around in. That right? Yeah. Well, I gotta pick up my boy's tickets. He's off for a week at camp. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you around. <laughs> Fellow, it looks like you're lost in a fog of your own creation. Maybe you'd be better off to get lost in your work. If you get going, everything may clear up. Get going, get going. Is that all you know how to say? Things have
have been a little hectic and you may have lost track of that original proposition. So here it is again. For any man to get more of the things he wants, he must first produce more. Produce more? Look, I'm producing more now than the regulations call for. I know my rights. Nobody's criticizing you, but costs are rising. Competition is trying to beat the prices down and boost quality. Maybe between us we could noodle a way to get more out without any sweat. You're a capable guy. You've had a lot of experience. I figured you'd be glad to give me some help. Sure, sure. Did you hear that, Guff? What was he telling you? You heard him. Get out and bleed for the dear old corporation. How about my getting what's coming to me once in a while? I thought he was telling you that you're a capable guy with a lot of experience. And that he'd appreciate your help. Oh, fine. Why don't they put that in my pay envelope where I can use it? Produce, produce. That's easy to say when all you have to do is push people around. Would you rather be a foreman? Would I? Well, of course I would. Then you'd see some real production. Oh, may I see you for a moment? Yes. I just wondered if you've been able to... No, it, Jones, I haven't, not yet. But it's awfully important... As soon as I'm able to, I'll look into it. I've got some rush work to take care of first. Besides that, I can't upgrade you simply because you want more or need more. Uh, your work's been falling off, you know. Well, I know it has. You I realize that if you want more, you've got to produce more. Just cut and dry as that. Well, what a deal. You didn't even give Jones a chance to explain himself. Well, he didn't explain anything. Uh, guy hasn't got a chance around this joint anymore. Oh, Adam. Oh, hello, Mr. Walker. Adam, I might as well come straight to the point. I'm worried about the performance of your department. Well, I can explain that, Mr. Walker. You see, I... Uh, Not only has production failed to pick up, but the stuff you've been sending over to Mike Edwards' department has had so many rejections that we've... Oh, well, I can explain that, Mr. Walker, too. You see, I... I'm sure you can. But if you can explain it, you can also do something about it. It's your department, and it's got to start producing more and better. By whatever means you can find, you've got to improve its productivity. Now, if there's any help at all that I can give you in straightening things... You know, I was reading somewhere that the average guy partway up the totem pole always feels like he's right in the middle all the time. Well, I can understand why he feels that way. That's right where he is. Maybe the point is that nobody wants to be in the middle. I better check that. Adam, how would you like to? How would you like... Oh, it's you. Did you hear that guy? Didn't even give me a chance to explain the situation. Left me right in the middle. Would you like to be in a better situation? I've heard that before. If you think... Like president of the company? Up on top instead of in the squeeze? President? Hey, <laughs> now you're talking. President? Then I'd really get things going. And a review of the situation clearly indicates that the productivity of this company must be increased if it is to survive the squeeze between rising costs and intensified competition. Somehow we must impress our operating management that that is their number one responsibility. That realization, in fact, must be made to permeate the minds of all our people, right down to the apprentice class. Well, heaven knows we've done our part. We've supplied them with the finest tools and the best plant in the industry. Exactly. Our wages and fringe benefits can't be beat by anyone. They represent far more than we pay out in management salaries and stock dividends. We are going to tell them that to get more, they must first produce more. If we explain the situation to them simply and concisely, they should see that what is good for the company is also good for them, and they should act accordingly. Now, we are beginning a campaign to spell out that basic point so that no one will fail to get it. And I think at our next board meeting, I'll have news for you. I'm sure Ed will interest it. Thank you, Adam. And now that's the end of our business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second the motion. To get more, you must first produce more. Good statement. That also applies when you're trying to keep what you already have, like the presidency. Straight from the shoulder, that's the way to do it. It sure was. Now let's see what it produces.
Did you see that? I sure did. Straight from the shoulder, wasn't it? Why in the world did they do that? Straight from the shoulder. Straight from the shoulder. My, look at all the producing that's going on. Look at that. There I am, right in the middle again. Straight from the shoulder. Yes? The board will meet in ten minutes, Mr. Hathaway. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, the point is quite clear. It is obviously impossible to get what you want without actually producing it yourself. So... Wait a minute. Hold it. Let's look at this from my point of view for a minute. I'm in this thing. I write for a living. Now, you say that to get the things I want, I must produce it myself. That's what I produce. But what I want is things for my family. We need a bigger house. We need college funds. We like to take vacations. So I don't get what I want by producing it. I get what I want by producing what other people want if I can. So you see, there's something wrong with your proposition somewhere. He's right. I'm a printer. I produce impressions on a piece of paper. But they aren't what I want. They're what someone else wants. It's an entirely different problem and sometimes difficult fight to get what I want in return. I'll go for that. I work in there on a salary. What do you mean, get more of what I want by producing? I could knock myself out trying to turn out work and I'd still get the same paycheck as if I'd goofed off every time I got a chance. Profit sharing? Sure, we have profit sharing. What control do I have over that? Doesn't make sense to me. What do I produce? All I do is take in money that I don't get to keep and make change with money that isn't mine. What have I done at the end of the day? How can I get more of what I want out of that? Short change, everybody? Naturally, we want our farm to be as productive as we can make it. But do you think for one minute that farm produce is what we want? That's ridiculous. We don't produce for ourselves, we produce for profit. I'm afraid I have to go along with the general thinking here. I know many men, I'm one of them, who made their fortunes earlier in life and no longer need produce anything to satisfy their material wants. I believe you'll find that the answer lies in finding out how to procure more easily and distribute more equitably the things that are materially important to all. Not only those things which the community shares in common, such as highways, more and bigger and better schools, but also those individual possessions which contribute so materially to the benefit of all by serving each in a good way. Such things as good homes, new cars, appliances, labor-saving devices of all kinds. The things that give us a higher standard of living, tangible products, also give us a sense of freedom and security. And those intangible treasures, freedom and security, are the real things people want. Yes, I'm sure that's right. We all seem to agree that what we want does not come from us, but from those around us. Like the love I want for my children. Apparently, it has never even occurred to her that she produces the love that comes back to her from her children. Well, Adam, how about it? Oh, Adam. How are things going? Are you getting everything you want? You put me in one impossible situation after another. And now you have the nerve to ask me a question like that. Of course I'm not getting what I want. But you have been producing all the time, haven't you? I've been trying to. And you have been. But you haven't been producing what other people want. You've been trying to control what's coming to you. That's patently impossible. Whatever you produce, goes from you. That's what I meant by getting things going. Going from you. I don't understand a word you're saying. I'm ready to give up. I'm beat. I think we could handle this whole thing if only you and I could just get together. Get together? <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks like we're early. Well, we might as well go in and get sooner. 
said he had some news for us at this meeting. I wonder what it is. I don't know. But the board sure has news for him. That's sure. Gentlemen, let's get right to the heart of the matter. Because of an error in judgment, for which I must accept responsibility, our company has suffered serious damage, both to productivity and human relations. Both must be repaired as quickly and completely as possible. For our goal to increase productivity was entirely worthy and sincerely conceived. It is also quite true that to get more of what he wants, whether material or intangible, a man must first become more productive. But that cannot be achieved by merely issuing an order. That only served to drive an issue between ourselves and our employees, destroying our unity and facing an issue of vital concern to all the company. Increasing productivity begins, or should begin, right here in this room. It is a challenge to every one of us to find ways to create an atmosphere in which productivity will grow and flourish. An atmosphere which enables everyone in this company to feel independent and self-managed, yet eager at the same time in his way to function as an integral and indispensable part of this company. We must take a good hard look at our plants and properties, as our facilities and methods. Are they competitive with others in our field today? Will they be tomorrow? That's where our long-range planning must be re-examined, and critically. Stepping up productivity does not mean longer hours or speed up. It grows out of ingenuity, far-sightedness, progressive thinking, here in this boardroom and beyond, throughout our entire organization. Our people are good people, able and willing to do their part in achieving our common goal. But first, they must be made aware that we are all in this together, unified. That same unity must be extended to include our customer and owner groups, our industries, our communities. Yes, even our nation. In short, both inside and outside its own boundaries, this company must behave like a mature adult, a good citizen. Now let's become more specific. Yeah, fine talk. It's easy to show off to the board of directors. But I knew Adam when, when he was a foreman. What a heel. I had a problem just driving me nuts. Good morning, Jones. Good morning. Say about that. Sir. You don't have to tell me. I can see it coming. OK, Jones, I won't. Say, look, you're a good man, but something's wrong, isn't it? Yeah, I'm in trouble. Money trouble, you know that. Well, could we talk it over during your break? Hmm? Well, this is a switch. Come over to my desk when you can. We'll need everything you can turn out between now and then, and Jones. Yeah? Don't worry. Whatever it is, you don't have to fight it alone. You'd be surprised how many ways there are to lick a problem when you're all together. Oh, Adam. Oh, yes, Mr. Walker. Mike Edwards turned in a complaint about the stuff you've been shipping over to his department lately. He says well, that... he's right, Mr. Walker. I've been slow in spotting the trouble, but I think I found the man who's responsible. Who is he? With things the way they are. As far as your records are concerned, Mr. Walker, it's me. My men run machines. I'm the one who's supposed to produce the productivity around here. Well, I'll be... <laughs> okay, Adam. Get things going and straighten it out. I'll give it my best, Mr. Walker, and thanks. Look, you seem to have forgotten me. I was Adam's foreman when he was working on a machine. Now, I'll grant that there is something to the sweetness and light stuff. It's good when you use it on a guy who will give you the same thing back. But uh, what about when you don't get it back and you've got nothing to fight with? Why don't you give it a real try? Put Adam back at his machine and then give him the nastiest foreman you can imagine. Well, for once your machine's set up right, how'd it happen? Somebody do it for you? Oh, I set it up. Sure you did. The worst ham hands in the whole department. Do you expect me to believe that? No, but it's true. Listen, don't be giving me any lip. And I'll tell you something for your own good. If sales don't pick up, there's going to be some faces missing around here. What with operating costs, what they are. Oh, that reminds me. I had kind of an idea I thought might cut costs in this operation. I checked it every way I know how, and it still seems to make sense. 
Of course, I don't know the whole picture the way you do, but I thought maybe you'd tell me if it has anything. Look, if I went over all the harebrained ideas you guys dream up, I wouldn't have time to... Have you shown this to anyone else? No, I wanted to get your feeling first about whether it's worthwhile submitting. The guy's nuts. He's practically asking Stoneface to steal his idea and take credit for it. Yeah, how dumb can you get? Why, you fathead, you haven't even got your name on this. I'm not saying it's good or that the committee will accept it. But get your name on this and put it in the suggestion box before somebody else latches onto the idea. Won't you dumb clucks ever learn? Uh-oh, there's the whistle. Gosh, where did the time go? I gotta pick up some paint on the way home. And remember what I said. Night, haven't we? Night. Well, everything's ready for the big expedition, dear. Oh, I don't know how you could stand this filthy jacket if you'd have told me how to wash it for you long ago. Thanks, Martha. I fixed the sleeve, too. When are you coming to bed? It's getting late. I'll be along. Just have to do the woodwork. Now, don't stay up too late. You'll be groggy in the morning. It's good for me. Thanks for fixing my fishing gear. Oh, think nothing of it. Pay you off with fresh fish tomorrow afternoon. Good, and I'll clean the horrid things, too. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Well, that's that. What does it all represent? I've got a better question. What do you represent? Whatever your job, whatever your station in life, you represent someone who wants something. I don't mean just things like painted houses, new cars, refrigerators, money, and so forth. I mean things like cooperation, affection, human understanding, help, guidance, skill. Do you want any of those things? Well, remember what Adam said. When the chips are down, you have to catch your own fish. All right. What are you hanging around for? Get going. Like it? 
You know, it is kind of interesting to see how a basic piece of music can be developed in various styles. But you're wondering, what has that to do with productivity? Well, that's a good question. Is a pianist a producer? Of course he is. Productivity does not necessarily result in a tangible something that you can wrap up and take home. Further, as I think I just demonstrated, it need not handcuff imagination. On the contrary, imagination is one of the greatest stimulants to productivity. Now, you've just seen a picture that says, in effect, to get more of what you want out of life, you must first become more productive. Now, that's fine, but where do we go from there? I can well believe that many of you are a little confused. I mean, try as you will, you can't find any direct application to yourselves. And that's good. At least the fact that you try is good. Others of you may figure, well, it was easy enough to see how Adam Hathaway could straighten himself out, but my situation is different. And that's very true. Every one of us has his own individual situation because every one of us is an individual. A lot of you probably tripped over that word productivity. What does that mean, really? Well, let's forget the picture entirely for a moment and do a little thinking. Productivity. Look at it hard. What does it mean to you? Well, now here's what Webster says about it. Productivity, having the quality or power to produce. Creative, fertile, effective in bringing forth or originating. Yielding results, profits, benefits, wealth. Now, to my mind, that last line is most significant. And yet that isn't entirely satisfying, at least not to me. And I'll venture to say most of you feel the same way. Each of you will have to rephrase that definition to fit your personal situation. Now, as a starting point, I'd like to break that down as I see it. And remember, this is just me, just one guy. Now, Webster says results. I presume he means satisfactory results, so let's make our first category satisfaction that applies to any product, tangible or otherwise. Instead of profits, let's use the term compensation, which is broader and yet more direct in application. And then I'd put down the category of beneficial, applying either to the individual or to those around him. Then there's another facet of productivity which Webster ignores. That's prestige, which covers a multitude of qualities such as pride in product, progressiveness, outstanding utility, and a lot more. Now, Webster lists wealth, but to me, that's a comparative quality. I'd rather use the term security, because it has much more personal application. So there we've broken down productivity into its various elements or attributes. All right, now let's see what we can do about setting down a brief list of jobs to measure on this scale of productivity. Let's start with my own category, artist. And of course, that includes painters, sculptors, singers, actors, all the arts. Now, some occupational classifications more closely related to you, our audience. The professions, that includes doctors, lawyers, airline pilots, nurses, and others of that group. Mechanics, including carpenters, plumbers, electricians, motor car servicemen, and so on. Salesmen, particularly those whose rewards are based upon individual sales volume. Life insurance, specialty salespeople, literary agents, and the like. Production workers, whose output is definitely linked to the productive capacity of machines of a predetermined cycle. Private secretary, who might be the confidant of the head of a big corporation, or the right arm of a small business executive, including in her job running the switchboard and keeping books. Homemaker, either in a home staffed with servants, a modern suburban split level, or a 12th floor apartment. Presumably, she has children. Educator, in any field, grade school to college. Yes, even missionaries. Scientist. Exploring the atom, celestial penetration, or finding a cure for the common cold. Statesmen, ranging from those who formulate foreign policy, 
to your own city council. Business executives, whether heading a corporation or a department of file clerks. Military, running the gamut from career officers to draftees. Now, all of these have one attribute in common. All are producers. Now, some may want more than others. Who wants what and how they may attain what they want, that's for you to determine. The first step, obviously, is to measure their potential against our basic concept of productivity and grade them plus or minus. If in doubt, mark a question. Now, take my own category, artist. Am I satisfied with my productivity? Well, yes and no. I'll wager that no artist is entirely satisfied with what he turns out. He always wants to do better. On the other hand, there's nothing I'd rather do, so suppose I grade myself with a plus. Compensation. Well, I'd like to start an argument. Many artists have died poor while their works live to become priceless. On the other hand, uh, some guy with long sideburns and a guitar I suppose we just question that for uh, future discussion. Is the artist's work beneficial? Well, now I say that if it brightens the lives of his audience for just a fleeting hour, it is definitely beneficial. And I think you'd agree that it carries prestige. Now, what about security? Happily for me, enough people enjoy what I do to earn a very good living, but suppose I got arthritis. Also, consider how quickly public taste can change, the fickleness of popularity. Uh, better set down a great big question mark. Now, the biggest question of all. Assuming that I want a richer, fuller life, which I do, and admitting that to realize that wish, I must become more productive, what should I do about it? and all these different people in all the jobs that make up our world. What can they do to achieve their ambitions to become more productive? That's for you to decide. How can you achieve more of what you want out of life? You decide. From previous experience, I know very well that the discussion of the questions posed in this diagram will go far beyond this meeting room. And that's good. In fact, that's the purpose of this meeting. And the reason why Champion produced the picture you've just seen. Now, we don't have any ready-made answers for you. Nobody has. Except those which you yourselves develop. Now, it won't be easy. But out of the discussions of groups just such as this can come some highly stimulating thinking. And that's where all improvement starts. With thinking. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.